Preamble Following the publication of my book, The Gospel Offer is Free, my reply to George M. Ellis, The Free Offer and The Call of the Gospel, I received some friendly correspondence from Alan Clifford, including a copy of his Amiro Affirmed. The pointed issue was this. How could I believe in both a free offer and particular redemption? And why, in my book, had I not dealt with those biblical texts which seem to speak of universal redemption? My reply was twofold. First, since Ella had not raised the issue with me, I had not delved into the matter. Secondly, I do not think the extent of the atonement has any bearing on the free offer, and I had said as much in my book. But on reflection, I see I was remiss. There was more than enough in Ella's book for me to have tackled the issue, and I should have done so. I now put the matter right. One benefit of the delay, however, is that I am now able to engage with Clifford's work. And this is important. My view of the free offer is criticised by Calvinists on two fronts. Hyper-Calvinists, Ella for instance, and four-pointers, Clifford for instance. Those who preach a free offer must hold to universal atonement, they say, since it is not possible to hold particular redemption and make the free offer. There is, however, a world of difference in their criticisms. Ella utterly disagrees with the free offer, and is scathing of my position, convinced I undermine the doctrines of grace. Clifford, on the other hand, wholeheartedly agrees with the free offer, but thinks I would make my case complete by adopting universal atonement. Both are mistaken. Before I get to grips with this, let me spell out what is not at stake. Total depravity is not in question. All men are sinners and have no power to repent and believe. Unconditional election is not in question. God the Father has freely determined those whom he will save, his choice being without any foreseen merit in the sinner. Irresistible grace or effectual calling is not in question. God the Holy Spirit works in the elect sinner, irresistibly calling him to Christ through faith and repentance. The perseverance of the redeemed and believing elect is not in question. God works in them, keeping them throughout their earthly pilgrimage to present them faultless in glory at the last day. None of this is at issue here. Let me say it again. None of this is at issue here. So what is? Just this. What exactly is offered to sinners in the free offer? If the redemption Christ wrought is particular in its scope, that is, limited in its extent, how can the offer be free and sincere to every sinner? Putting it the other way, if Christ has not died for every sinner, how can every sinner be offered salvation? There are two questions here. First, what is the extent of the atonement? Secondly, if this is limited, how does it impinge on the free offer? Before I set out my answers to these questions, let me explain my purpose. There is a theological issue, yes, and it is vital to be as accurate and as clear as we can when forming our doctrines and practices. But I did not write this book, nor am I reading it now, merely to engage in an academic debate. As I said in my offer, the free offer is an important principle or doctrine, yes. 
But it is not so much a controversy over doctrine which is at stake. It is the practical consequences of that controversy. I want to let believers know how far we have fallen away from real gospel preaching. Above all, I pray that preachers who read my book or hear my audio, and I include myself, may be moved to fulfill the task God has laid upon them. The same applies to this book. I am convinced we need to preach the free offer without fear or embarrassment. Some who would like to do this feel that particular redemption militates against it. Wanting to be true to Scripture, they think limited atonement stops them making invitations to all. They are mistaken. But my aim is not merely to prove a point. Yes, I want to do what I can to remove, in a biblical way, hindrances from the path of those who would like to be free with sinners. To rebut, especially, the mistaken view that particular redemption rules it out. Indeed, I hope to show that the opposite is the case. Without a particular, definite, and absolute redemption for all the elect, there would be no free offer to sinners. I want to do all that, but I want to go further. I pray that my book will encourage all who are seeking to address sinners with the free offer, to encourage them to go on with it and to be even more bold, to have even more love for sinners, to reach full biblical freeness in the glorious work. Indeed, above all, I hope my book will contribute to the dawning of a better day than many of us know at present, a day in which God raises up men who will not only biblically address sinners with the full and free offer of Christ, but do so with success. So, let us begin.